Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and as promised, we're going to continue with the airport with part two. All right, so last time, very quick recap, we did basically one of the outside areas of our large airport facade, with this being the side wall of the airport building itself. And then we've got some kind of kit outside, but the main thing being this jetway that links to the front of a plane, which is cut off just behind this section because it is the facade of a plane. And that means that it will continue on through into the wall of my Lego room, which this building will be up against. Now I did have one very true, but very unhelpful comment that <laughs> um, basically the wings of this plane would be quite long and would effectively go right into the insides of this building. Uh, and that is right. So I'm just going to say that this building probably finishes about here. <laughs> That's a quick way around that problem, isn't it? Um, and that the, you know, wing can successfully go around the back. But um, uh, a very good point nonetheless. Uh, and I had quite a few uh, good points. So uh, I've started reflecting a few of them, and I'll reflect a few more of them with you here. Uh, so the first one was about these wheels on the bottom of the Skyway. And I kind of thought they should have gone uh, this way, uh, kind of towards us, so the whole thing could sort of swing in an arc. But it turns out that they actually face uh, left to right as we're looking at it, as I've got it now. Uh, and that's just because the whole thing kind of extends out to meet the plane and retracts back a bit. So uh, I've been corrected on that. Uh, and I think it uh, is better to have it being more reflecting reality. And I just thought I'd put a couple of tiles under that, because this area, whole area, uh, will be tiled in due course, but effectively it's sagging a little bit just because it doesn't have any tiles on it at the moment. So let's just try and attach that back. Now I've dislodged it. There we go. So hopefully now that looks a bit more flat. Yes, I think it is. Uh, and you can probably see already the second suggestion that I've reflected already. Uh, and that's just to have a boy on his way onto the plane, just pausing in the mid jetway, just to wave at somebody who's perhaps waving him goodbye. Because the um, edge of this outside area will be the edge of this base plate. So there'll be a kind of fence here. Uh, and that's why I can't really make this plane stick out any further, because it's only, only, only just inside uh, the airport facility as it is. So um, I'll have to remember to put somebody about here on the other side of the fence, just sort of waving back at him. Otherwise, it won't make as much sense. But uh, I think it looks even better with four people uh, walking through the jetway. So that's really good. Happy with that as well. Now, the next couple, I'm just going to temporarily remove the jet for. Um, and that's because the first one was to say that this gap uh, at the top of the jetway uh, between it and the plane would let in the rain and everyone getting on would be uh, at a real disadvantage start of that flight with wet hair and so on. Now, obviously, it doesn't rain in uh, Lego cities, really. Uh, but nonetheless, I like the idea. So I thought I would uh, add a plate to that. And I thought that this one would be the one that would be the right shape to do it, because it's kind of a two by six, as is there already, but with an extra bit on the front. But unfortunately, that's too big and actually spoils on the plane. So won't use that. So instead, I'm going to use this setup. So it's just a slightly smaller version of the same thing. And I'm going to use this uh, plate here just to attach one to the other. So then we end up with just this little kind of pointy bit in the middle. And that pretty much marries up perfectly with uh, the whole of the plane. I mean, there is still some slight gaps on the outsides, but I don't think there's much we can do about them. But that is surely uh, an improvement. Good, good. Right. Now, the fourth one was about the markings on the ground area below. Uh, and I had thought that I would do a nice white dotted line all along here, and then probably a number kind of in yellow or something like that, and maybe have a yellow sort of boxed off area. But um, a couple of the comments drew my attention to the fact that isn't what happens in real life at all. What happens in real life is you have a solid yellow line down the middle, so the opposite already, <laughs> not a dashed white one, solid yellow, that ends in a T-bar, and that's basically where the uh, wheel, single wheel at the front of the plane would kind of follow until it reaches the T element of that and it would stop. Uh, and then you might have a white 
uh, boxed off area for something like this little fuel cart. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I did kind of really want to put a number on, but a number would probably be uh, um, a runway or something like that. So again, probably not uh, the best place for it. So I'll do away with the number idea uh, or maybe do it somewhere else or maybe add it later as well, who knows. But I thought I'd take that off and add a kind of yellow line, which can be like this and get another six long bit and when this is fully enclosed this line i think it'll look even better because it's a bit sort of standing proud at the moment obviously but um when it's the same level as all of the dark bluish gray tiles because i don't want to use light bluish gray because that's what all the pavements and sidewalks will be outside so um having some dark bluish gray tiles in here will suit that better so i think that's vaguely uh, accurate definitely more accurate than what i was going to do before i got that comment now another one was about the pilot i had co-pilot jang up at the gate which isn't really that accurate anyway uh, and somebody suggested that i should make him do a pre-flight inspection outside the plane and then we'll be able to see him uh, a lot more visibly. In fact, a lot of people suggested that uh, and somebody added to the fact that you would usually have to don a uh, reflective uh, high-vis type jacket to be able to do that. So I did have this one, which is kind of from an old workman type set, just uh, uh, hanging around. So I thought I'd give it to him. So I can position him kind of anywhere around this outside area now, sort of having a good look at the plane and inspecting it for any issues like, I don't know, ice on the wings or something like that. Goodness knows. So that's excellent as well. Uh, and then another detail that was suggested to me was having what's called a GPU, which stands for ground power unit. So effectively, when the engines are off, there's nothing to power the electrics of the plane itself. So you basically plug it in. So I've designed a little one of those. I've kind of followed this style that I saw on uh, Google, just looking at Google images. Uh, and what I've done is made a little setup like this. So it kind of looks like it pops out of the floor. So it's got a little section of floor uh, kind of on the top there, and it would retract when it wasn't needed. And I've got one of these sort of bendy um, kind of cable pieces. And it says Octan E on it, and that's because it actually comes from the set 60257 service station, where it was uh, an electric charging point for a car. But I kind of figure that Octan E and just a number uh, would be kind of appropriate for here. So I can just pick anywhere really, like here. And then I'm gonna plug that little bit into a half Technic pin that I've pushed into the hole already on the bottom of the nose. So let's say there or something like that, maybe a bit further back. Uh, and then I'll probably put a black one by two tile just in front of it there, just to suggest that the whole thing descends into a hole. So the black bit representing a hole. And then when I surround it with more uh, dark bluish gray tiles, then, which I'll just throw a few in for now, hopefully it'll look like it's something that's popping up out of the tarmac that can retract later. So I really like that one, great suggestion. And then last of all, a lot of people suggested I get a lot bigger tiles than just two by two, so it wasn't so uh, time consuming to do and, and so costly as well. And I do actually have a couple of these eight by 16 uh, tiles as well. Uh, and I thought I could actually use them to take the place of a lot of smaller pieces. So I thought I could put, say that there, and then use some one by two white tiles to kind of create a kind of dotted or dashed off area. Uh, I can make this a bit neater in due course, um, but something along these lines. And that can be kind of a safety area where something like this fuel cart could live essentially. So I've probably got that wrong but I'm not going for an absolutely accurate uh, airport here because if I do that, well, I have to add a, a whole load of stuff and, you know, it's not really my priority. What I want is something nice and simple with some really funny scenes. So 
Uh, I won't do <laughs> too many future amendments that are getting too technical because I know a lot of you are AV fans and um, you just <laughs> you've got a, a load of knowledge that is possibly just a bit too much for this scene. But uh, yeah, so I'll finish up that uh, and then we can look at what we're doing today. Right, so that's all of that pushed down. It does mean that this uh, fuel cart is a bit uh, kind of loose and free at the moment. Uh, and there's co-pilot Jang looking up at the side of the uh, plane there. And I've just moved this over here for now. I probably will put it back over here, but I've put it there for now just so I could liberate that 8x16 and this 8x16 base plate so I can use them for today's build. So I'm going to put all of that to one side because what I'm going to do next is do the right at the other end of the building. So we just did the side that we're going to be looking at uh, on the left with the building then in the middle. And now I want to do the area that's to the right. So this again will be part outside, part inside. So I've got this set up, which is another two of those uh, 16 by 32 base plates and four of the 8 by 16. And that's just because that setup uh, fits the area that I've got that we did last time. Now this area, basically this half here, is going to be outside the building and is going to be where all the baggage carts are and things like that. So essentially, when you kind of come in the front door of the airport, you'll check in and your bags will go out this way to all of the baggage handler people or the throwers, as I like to think of them, because <laughs> they throw around the bags, of course. Uh, and they would load them onto all the baggage carts and things like that. And it would go off to the aircraft, whereas you would go to the waiting area via the shops and so on. Uh, so you could go across the sky bridge and into the plane uh, that way. So that's how I'm dividing the uh, areas. So as I say, this area will be outside uh, and have the actual carts and things like that. And then this area, I suppose, will be everything from the check-in where you uh, leave your bags and then they can go up uh, outside using conveyor belts. Now I'm going to use these just because they're quite a fun piece really and I haven't used any in my city so far. And I'm very much a fan of how they were used in the airport set 60104, airport passenger terminal from 2016. That's the one with the blue plane that we're going to have taking off over our terminal building. Uh, and it has a very visible play feature in that the um, brick there has uh, an arrow on it and all that. But I quite like that. I think Lego should look like Lego. So having visible play features is not a bad thing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and how that worked was basically you would check in, put your bag onto the conveyor. It would turn and go out of the building where it would sort of fall into an area that could be uh, uh, collected by a baggage cart. So I'm going to do something very similar to that, uh, but I'm also going to have a second one. And the second one is going to be going the other way. So the baggage cart from an arrived plane will basically deposit its luggage onto that one and it will go back into the building that way and then the bags will fall off from the top of this down a little chute into a carousel so uh, minifigures who've arrived in Brick Nottingham can pick up their bags uh, and then leave and go into the city. So basically I have to first of all uh, make a dividing wall uh, which will be the outside wall of the uh, terminal building itself uh, and I'm going to have to have two four wide holes in that wall one for the in conveyor belt and one for the out conveyor belt as well so I'm going to use the same sort of lattice pieces that I used on the other side because I think they look really industrial and kind of hang alike and all the rest of it and I'm going to go and put that there uh, some people have suggested I put glass panels behind here so that it does end up being glazed but I really don't think it needs it. I think it kind of looks like it's glazed already uh, and it would look a bit unsightly from the edges later on. Then I'm going to add some columns, but they've got some great big lights on because these people will be working kind of all around the clock. So I want them to be able to see what they're doing. There's another one. So that's the first four wide gap. Then that, then a door for people to get through. And I'm just using a normal kind of glass door, but I've put on a restricted area sticker. Uh, 
authorised minifigures only, ID required. So I absolutely love that sticker. And that was actually part of a different airport set, but it was a superhero one, 76051, superhero airport battle. That is a fantastic sticker sheet, that one. Let me just show you it. Uh, so it got all the giant Ant-Man um, stickers on and so on. But there's another one that I'm planning to use there. Air traffic control with a sort of 90 and an arrow and no entry. And even these ones, which are used in the control tower, which are really good. Um, so that one came from there. There were sort of loads of ones that are on packaging and cargo that I've used already um, on bits and bobs around the city. So that's a really good sheet. So I've just added a couple of plates on there just so it uh, fits a bit better. And that'll go right up against the Lattice stuff, leaving another four gap. And then I can put two of these arches, shallow arches over there, just to make it a bit more kind of, I don't know, smooth looking. Uh, and I've just got this set up just to save me some time. It's just some one by two by two panels. Uh, and I've just changed it. So some are in this um, trans light blue that I'm using for all of my glass because I use that color on the uh, jetway, of course. I've got it on the door and I will be having it on all the glass on the front of the building. So there's two sort of high windows, which are mainly for light really. And then just to hold it all together, I've got another sort of row of bricks and light bluish gray plates, just like I did on the other end. And I'll put that on top. And you can see that I've taken inspiration from another old airport set, which was the uh, 3182 airport. Uh, which has these sort of grills uh, on. I don't know if they're supposed to be kind of the tops of shutters or what, but I kind of like them. Uh, and when the roof's sort of over that, I think it'll look really smart. So that is our outside wall of uh, this side of the terminal building. Right, so now I'm going to have to design how these are going to work with one kind of going upwards, which is taking luggage into the building, and one that's kind of coming out upwards, uh, taking luggage out. Uh, uh, and then I'll have to link it up to some other workings on the inside, of course. Right, leave me to do that. Right, so I think I've got this system worked out. Uh, first thing to point out is I have flipped this around. So now this side is the wall side. Uh, and this is the angle that we're going to be viewing it from, from the second standing hole. Uh, so what I've got here is just that um, conveyor piece kind of wedged in place here. It's uh, attached with some Technic pins at the midpoint and also a couple more here. The spacing's not entirely perfect, if I'm honest, but at least it clamps it firmly in place for when you're using the play feature. Now, because I've got it this way round, you can see that the way I'm turning it to bring the bags out of the building is actually the opposite direction to what that arrow is saying. So fortunately, I have a different one, which is another one-way arrow, just in a different color. It happens to be in light bluish gray, but that's fine. So I can put that on this little crank here, uh, and then it makes a lot more sense when I'm turning it that way to get the bags out. So just to test that, it's not that I've been buying loads of uh, luggage or anything, but when you uh, deposit some luggage on that end of the conveyor, you see it will come out and then land outside the building for the throwers to pick up and throw onto a baggage cart. So that's excellent. So what I've really got to do now is do another one that works in the opposite direction. So here is a conveyor. Uh, and I'll need the uh, handle thing on this side again. But now I can actually put this one with the uh, other arrow on because it will be that way that we're turning this one because we want bags to be going in. So I'm hoping that these won't clash because that one needs to be something like that. Now, this is getting in the way of the door, isn't it? So maybe I've already got a bit of a design flaw. Maybe I need to swap this one with this one uh, to see if we can get it to work a bit better, because at least if it's high up in front of the door, it won't spoil as badly. Hmm. Yeah, this is harder than I thought. But anyway, I'm going to continue with this just uh, to see if I can do proof of concept. And then, of course, we can always flip it. So these are the um, Technic bricks that I'm using just to clamp it in place. 
and I need to put those in the holes on the sides of the conveyor. And then just so it's nice and neat, I'm just using these uh, tall blue slopes as well. And there's one and another one. And then that can all be pinned down. So that's good. So then when bags get put on this end of the conveyor, then we can turn this and they'll go into the terminal building and where they can slide onto a system that will go onto that carousel. So you can see what I'm trying to achieve there. Uh, it's just a real disappointment that that uh, is right in front of this restricted uh, access door. It might be that I'm still happy with that, but it might be even better if I manage to switch these around. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm, more thinking required. As is often the case with these things, the simplest solution is probably the best one. I've just put that uh, turning brick on the other side, and although they are quite close now, I can still sort of turn this one that way and grab this one to turn that one the other way. Uh, the sticker now doesn't make sense because it's on the other side, but you can't even see it, so it doesn't really matter. So uh, I might take that off and put the plain one back on. Uh, but now we do have at least an unencumbered door on the outside. Uh, and then when we move to the inside, what I really need now is something to take it from this high height down to this area where I'm going to have the actual carousel. And I've just made this little ramp out of one of those um, fuselage pieces mounted on a hinge brick with some tiles on there just to continue the sort of yellow outline but black uh, conveyor type look. So if I put that there, and then these cheese wedge pieces kind of marry up with the ends of that, then it will tip bags onto this area. And I'm going to continue the yellow of the kind of edging with these four round or curved bricks rather. Uh, and then an idea that was from another one of those old airport sets, in this case, 7894 Airport from 2006. That set actually had a little carousel in it and it used one of these dish pieces that's kind of like a radar dish. But if I just put that on a turntable, then it can turn uh, and take the luggage or bags around in a circle. Now, obviously, it's a bit of a small circle compared with a real life one, but I think that's as good as we're going to get in the confined space that we've got. And I'm going to put it on a large pole like this that's got a few hazard stripes at the bottom and then just black because I'm actually going to incorporate that with the roof of my airport so you can actually turn this from the outside as well. Now, uh, I imagine that's going to split my audience and that some people are going to think, oh my God, it's going to be covered in play features and look really silly. Um, but that's kind of my style. I kind of like that. So that's the way I fancy doing it. So I haven't done anything more on this one yet. I think that's obviously going to be the check-in desk, which is going to be hugging this back wall. But I think while we've got this, let's test it with a couple of brown bags. So I can put them in at this end. Here we go. One, two, three. So I've got those on that end and I can do the turning of this play feature fairly easily. At least for the moment, I can do it fairly easily. And then they'll fall off the end there and fall onto the carousel, which will turn. Yeah, that turns. So that'll turn there, go into the gap and it goes into the gap. So at least we've got kind of a real life situation of how bags are delivered from the throwers on the outside all the way to the carousel for being picked up by passengers. So yeah, I really like that. Looks good. It's quite fun. Uh, so why not have a functional airport as well as a good looking one? Awesome. Right, so I need to now focus on doing the kind of reciprocal of that, which is where you drop off your bags and they go off into uh, the outside of the building. Right, so I flipped it again, just so we can see this area a bit better. Uh, and what I want to do on this is obviously have a check-in desk. I think I've only got space for one, but that's fair enough. And the first thing I need to do is kind of put in the computer screen, the keyboard and so on, that they seem to spend so much time tapping on when you're at the airport checking in. I mean, it's not like they're expecting you or anything. Goodness knows what they actually do on those machines. Um, and then we need the first part of the conveyor. Now, I've got a curved slope at one end uh, and then just tiles. Uh, 
it's not big enough to fit another one of these conveyor pieces in. So I'm kind of having that to link this area where you would put your bags on with the actual conveyor. And hopefully that still spins. Yeah, it does. So that's good. This isn't the best connection here. It's probably a bit of an illegal technique here that it's actually uh, being held on by, but nonetheless. Um, so there is the beginning of the conveyor. And then I've just got a wall here. So it divides it from the baggage pickup area. And then I can put another bit there just so it's all walled in. And then I can have an airline operative there on a chair taking the bags. So in that direction, let's get another bag. Oh, there's one with a nice sticker on it. Where's that one? Oh, that one's going to Billund or has been to Billund in Denmark. Um, so the bag would go on here uh, and then it get powered onto the beginning of the conveyor, by which point it would then get picked up and go out to the baggage handlers or throwers as I'm calling them. So I think that works well as well. So only one check-in desk, but we've only got one gate, to be honest. So it's not the end of the world, is it? Um, and then clearly this area will be the main sort of uh, hallway for all of the passengers to sort of congregate in before they go through security. So with my play features on the outside and the inside, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, let me just try and flip this. I've got kind of a spare area, therefore, kind of over here near the restricted door. So given that it's restricted in from that direction, I figured I'd use the other sticker that I mentioned earlier, the air traffic control with a no entry sign as well, and kind of a code lock to represent kind of a door into another area that the public aren't allowed to get into. Uh, and in the middle, there'd kind of be, well, a staff area, I suppose. So if I put that uh, about there, and I put in a, another set of these girder type uh, lattice pieces then essentially this very small area here can represent uh, behind the scenes or maybe a little staff breakout area where they've got a nice coffee machine there with uh, the jug and some mugs so we're going to have a great big glass wall at the front in due course so that will be backing right onto that so there we go so I think that's quite interesting you've got a door because you often have doors in the airports that you aren't allowed to go through uh, and the same sort of thing from the outside as well maybe I need to flip those round now I think that's probably the right way round, isn't it uh, and all my yellow ramps play features and check-in desk yeah I'm kind of liking how that's uh, shaping up apart from this door being incredibly wobbly <laughs> good good now, when I'm doing my brick hauls, I often get questions about how I organize all of my bricks for each project because I design using LDD, Lego Digital Designer usually. So that's what I've designed this building in. Uh, and then I accumulate all of the bricks, put them in uh, clear uh, bags uh, or a box if, uh, if there's a load of them. Uh, and then I can kind of get all the pieces I need from there when I'm doing the actual build. And then in addition to that, I often sort of collect pieces that I haven't got a specific use for. And that'd be stickered pieces and interesting things as well. So I've kind of got a little bag of airport themed stuff that I've just had to rummage through. And one was these torsos, which aren't so much pilots as just sort of maybe uh, airport employees with an ID badge and all the rest of it and the logo. And I thought that'd be a bit better than this guy with his unbuttoned top button very unprofessional so I'll keep his head and hair but surely that is a lot more smart and also goes kind of with the color scheme we've got going on as well I mean he might blend in a bit too much but gray and blue yeah I think that's better and the good thing is I've got another one of those as well so I can use him somewhere else maybe he's uh, helping sort out the baggage now uh, other things that I thought I could use somewhere, are these lovely air cargo stickers on 1x6 green bricks. I thought I could have a little air cargo area, but I haven't got a huge amount of space, to be honest. So I might just use these as adverts, uh, you know, side by side, kind of like a banner ad uh, somewhere in the building. So I'm going to keep those close to hand for when a suitable opportunity to use those comes up. Uh, and then I've also got this brick which was from one of those airports. I think it's the uh, 3182 airport. And this has obviously got an arrow, one direction for departures and one for arrivals. 
And, well, I've kind of got departures one way uh, and arrivals. Yeah, I suppose it would be this way. So maybe I could put that sort of here uh, for when people come in the main entrance. I don't know. So that's another one that I'm going to put with the air cargo ones for uh, remembering to use later. Uh, and then what have I got? I thought I'd start putting in the main windows. So I'm going to use these one by six by five um, panels in trans light blue. So I just lift that up a bit and that can go there. And this is pretty much the front style of that airport 60104. Uh, I've kind of copied the broad setup of that one, but expanded it vastly, obviously, um, to make this airport building. So I'll just put in the next set and this time I'm going to do two wide uh, before I put in the next bit of lattice so that will go like that okay so we're starting to build the front now we've got a really good corner of the end now I'm going to flip it again it's quite hard to keep on my desk in shot so you can see now the inside is starting to get enclosed so we've got our staff area with incredibly wobbly door i might have to see if it's the frame change that out and maybe it'll become less wobbly then uh, and then i've got this kind of nook therefore over here in between the uh, no entry door and the collection carousel and i was thinking that could be where a little air cargo uh, office was or something like that but what I've also got is some other pieces, namely this lovely panel of an airplane taking off, uh, which is from a junior set actually, 60261 Central Airport, and that's a recent one, 2020. Probably not called juniors anymore, but nonetheless. I, I quite like that as a sort of logo of an airline. And I've also been collecting, surprise, surprise, <laughs> loads of these. See how many there are, absolutely loads. And they've got this lovely uh, normal logo of the uh, uh, airlines in uh, Lego City uh, and and this tickets sort of badge. Now, at one point, I was thinking I could actually remove these stickers using my patented hot tea technique and actually put them onto one by two tiles to actually use as tickets uh, for people to hold. But then again, nowadays, you very rarely have a physical ticket, do you? So I thought I might build a ticket booth out of them because you can still buy airline tickets at uh, an airport itself so with that in mind I've got a few more clear ones as well uh, or other ones without stickers and I thought I'd make a little desk out of them with that being the sort of central um, thing and then it could have a bit of a pleasing curve by using these pieces so I'll continue that up with three on each side and sadly I clearly haven't collected enough. I'm one short, which is very frustrating. So I'm going to use one of these ones without a sticker on, but I'll probably put it down there just because it will be slightly less visible at the bottom left. So there we go. And then I'll put a tiny little lid on it like that. And that pretty much looks like a very garish and heavily stickered uh, ticket booth, I think. What do you think of that? I quite like it. Uh, and then for the inside of that, I'll have this little computer set up with this screen of departures on with passengers and seat numbers, which also came from that uh, 3182 set, I think. Uh, and that can be facing the employee, who we may as well use this guy. Uh, and where do we want this? Do we want it right against that side? Maybe one back? Possibly about there. So if I put him... Oop, getting a bit fiddly. Mm -mm -mm. all these poles and things in the way you see even though i'm not doing the biggest airport it's still going to be absolutely crammed so there we go oh maybe i need to move them a little bit that way so we can see them better or even one forward <laughs> oh that looks fun doesn't it there we go so oh can you see that how do you like that i'm gonna try and pick this up it may not work there we go that looks pretty good doesn't it yeah i like that Maybe I should move the computer. It's kind of blocking half of that hole. But then again, they do have those computer screens like that because they can kind of swivel them and show the uh, customer what they're booking for them. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then from the outside, how will that look? Uh, we'll just see the back of it. That's relatively ugly, I suppose. But um, hey-ho, I'm not too, not too uh, problematic with that. Good. Right, so 
I think that's a pretty good setup so far for the entire uh, kind of right wing of a huge airport. Okay, it's starting to come together, this entire side of the build. I'm really looking forward to uh, linking it with the other one we've already done. Uh, but I don't think we've got time this time to do the whole middle section that will be between uh, the stuff we did last time in part one and the stuff we've done today. So I will just finish off this wall with one more layer of white brick and these lovely modified plates with the ladder on which continues the kind of theme that's going on over these windows on the side, over the windows on the front. So three for that six wide there and uh, six of them for this 12 wide area here. And I think they look really nice, kind of maybe shutters or just building details that kind of uh, uh, look interesting, better than having it just uh, a box. Uh, and then I've got these tiles on the top that will uh, be underneath the detachable roof because I want this building to be able to have a liftable roof uh, just so you can peer inside and see all of the good stuff that we've done today uh, with regard to you know the baggage carousel and all the rest of it. I don't want to hide it. So I'm going to have to have a very strong roof indeed because it's what's that 22 studs deep and well probably about two or three times that length. So it's going to be a vast roof. I'm probably going to need the world's supply of uh, plates in order to make it strong enough to be removed and put back on quite easily. Uh, but the last thing I want to do today is just add a bit of vehicle action to the outside of this side. Uh, and I've kind of made a hybrid buggy out of uh, the buggies from two different sets. One is 60102, which is the uh, VIP uh, airport service set. Uh, and the other set that this uh, is sort of a hybrid of is the, is the buggy that's in set 60104 that we've looked at a couple of times now. Uh, and I've just kind of blended those together. And that's mainly so I could have two of them. This is only one of them, obviously, uh, but uh, I will have two that are identical. I did realize that I'm actually short the back um, mudguard type pieces on here. So I've just used plates for now, but I have put those back on my BrickLink order. And they've got this lovely follow me sticker. So when they're sort of pulling a plane along or something like that, um, or, or just directing it where to go, they've got that sign. He's got a couple of these sort of luminescent lights, or maybe they're the things you kind of wave around, though I'm told that they should be red and green, but hey ho, we've got some nice uh, neon ones there. So that can be on this side, and that could be what they're loading up with luggage, or maybe unloading. So I've got the cart that is part of 60104, uh, and I filled that with luggage. So there's eight pieces of luggage on there. It's uh, only held in by gravity, so I won't turn this up, side down, because they'll all fall out, and I'll carefully attach that there. Uh, and I thought, well, that doesn't look snake-like enough, uh, and it doesn't look like it's got enough luggage, and they usually have more uh, things on. I mean, that one, that set did have the fuel one that we looked at earlier actually attached to the back of there, but I want more luggage, so I've got, yay, another one <laughs> with even more luggage on. Yep, so there's 16 pieces of luggage, uh, and they're not even from the big pile of luggage <laughs> I poured out earlier. Clearly, I've been collecting suitcases as well, and I didn't even realise. I've really got a problem, haven't I? I think we're going to have to start Lego Addicts Anonymous with the 12 stud programme. Uh, I'll start it off. My name is Robin. It's been, uh, well, zero days since my last build. Uh, I need help. <laughs> so again, this area will get tiled. Uh, in due course and I think I'll add some more details maybe a radar dish or something like that obviously I'm going to have a control tower as well at some point but I think that's going to go on the roof uh, I haven't fully decided yet but it, it gives it a bit of a height advantage to start with if it is on there so that'll be good uh, and I will have this security fence kind of all around this whole area as well so to summarize what we've done today We've got a lovely, long, snake-like uh, baggage car. Uh, and then we've got two baggage ramps, both with uh, play features, one to bring the bags out and one to take them back into our terminal building. And in the building itself, we've got one of those ramps ending up in a carousel that will also be able to be turned by well, me, my hand, uh, and also the check-in desk here with that takes the bags. Uh, and 
not to waste any space, we've got a nice restricted area staff room with coffee machine and a very brightly coloured ticket office that looks so good from this direction. I'm sort of considering how I might turn it around uh, so it's facing the rest of the Lego room because we're looking from the walls perspective at the moment. So I think we've had a good session. There is the right hand side of the airport. Do tell me what you think. And if I just connect it to what we did last time, you can see the exact scale of the building. That's what we're going to have to do in part three, finishing it off, joining what we did last time to what we did this time. Uh, and you can see why this is a bit of a precarious thing to uh, move around because we've got all these different base plates barely held together. They'll be fine when they're on the Lego table, um, but it's a bit perilous at the moment. So, and there we go, there's that side. So it's a big old building as far as I'm concerned. Uh, in Brick Nottingham, most of my buildings are a lot smaller than that. But, yeah, coming together well. So I did very much enjoy receiving all of your feedback from the last part. Uh, so if you've got any good ideas to improve what I've done today, then do let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll just leave it to say thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I might take a break from the airport briefly uh, before coming back to it next Friday. Uh, and, well, I might just think about doing something different for a change. So, whatever I decide to do, see you then!